Greetings all, and welcome to the PhoneGap Essentials course on NetTuts Premium. Throughout this course, we'll be learning how to use PhoneGap to make mobile native applications coded in JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Now before we invest time and money in a new framework, it is important to ensure that it is really the right choice for your projects. We need to understand as much as possible about the strengths and weaknesses of PhoneGap, what it is capable of, which APIs it has access to, and how it performs. Everything we can before dedicating costly resources to development. So in this first lesson, I'm going to take a closer look at PhoneGap, what it is, what it can do, and what you should use it for. PhoneGap is currently also known as Apache Cordova, and it is important to understand why this is. When Adobe bought Nitobi, the developers of PhoneGap, they contributed PhoneGap in its entirety to the Apache Software Foundation under the name of Apache Cordova. This ensures that the core of PhoneGap will always be open source and free to use. PhoneGap is essentially Adobe's distribution of Apache Cordova. In this way, Adobe is then able to enlist community developer support to, to improve the product, whilst offering paid services and tools to aid development. The most important of these services is PhoneGap Build, which does all the heavy lifting for you in exporting your apps for multiple platforms. For now, let's see what PhoneGap can do by checking out some of the featured apps. Being a connoisseur of beer myself, the first app to catch my eye was Untapped. It is a location-based social network for sharing what beer you're drinking, who you're drinking it with, and where. The design, implemented with jQuery Mobile, is clean, organized, and whilst keeping a native feel, is customized and particular. I tested this one on an iPhone 4 and my Galaxy S2. Performance was perfectly acceptable on both, transitions were quick, scrolling was fast, and the app seemed overall responsive. Another app with similar functionality, though completely different content, is HealthTap. It is much the same story. A content-driven app, making use of the strengths of HTML and CSS for its design, whilst utilizing PhoneGap for added functionality. But what if we don't just want to build a website in an app? In the next app, What the Photo, we can see how PhoneGap can be used to create certain types of games. The game uses some simple animation in the interface, but the actual gameplay is not reliant on it. I tried this game out on my Galaxy S2 and found that while it worked well, it was also prone to crashing. There were also a lot of one-star reviews recently on Google Play with complaints of crashing. What we learned from this is that thorough testing is vital. Just because PhoneGap can export for many different platforms, it doesn't mean that the process will be without hiccups. Don't underestimate the time it will take to iron out the bugs across platforms. For an even more interactive experience, we have Orbium. As you can see, Orbium is a tile-based puzzle game. You have to divert the colored balls by rotating and moving different tiles. This is closer to what you can expect to achieve as far as games are concerned. I have not yet seen any convincing examples of fast-paced platform or action games. The rendering of HTML5 by mobile devices is still not yet up to the task, at least not for the majority of devices. For now, you should be safe to build puzzle games, card games, anything where frame rate is not really an issue. Finally, there's Harmonious. I wanted to show this app as it is an example of something you wouldn't think to build with HTML. Harmonious is a drawing app that creates new lines influenced by the lines you've already drawn. It uses the HTML5 canvas with the experimental Harmony library and jQuery Touch. As you can see by this web example, anyone can pick it up and create something that looks artistic and interesting. Users can then share their artworks directly from the app. This just goes to show you that while HTML may have its limitations, there are a lot of cool things you can do. So we're almost done with our evaluation of PhoneGap. We just need to take a look at what it can do technically, which APIs we have access to, and what sort of support there is. As you can see, PhoneGap can currently package native apps for iOS, Android, BlackBerry, WebOS, 
Windows Phone 7, Symbian and BADA. Windows Phone 8 is not currently supported, but by the time you see this it very well may be, with the launch of Apache Cordova 2.3.0. Now that is a long list of operating systems. Some of them will be of more interest to you than others, and some features are not yet supported on all OS's, and may never be. But for iOS, Android and Windows Phone, you get the lot. And each of these APIs is detailed here, in the docs. This is the first place you need to come if you have an idea for an app, and you want to use PhoneGap. For example, does your app need to read and create contacts on the user's phone? PhoneGap can do that. Each section will tell you not only how to use that feature by calling Cordova's JavaScript methods, but will also highlight platform-specific issues, such as permissions you need to add to your settings file, and quirks or bugs. At a glance, you can see that most smartphone functionality is covered here. Accelerometer, geolocation, compass, file storage, camera, and many more. In the coming lessons, we will be covering most of them in detail. Until then, I suggest you look them over. Even if you don't understand everything, it's important to understand the capabilities of the framework before you jump on board and start coding. Before I go, I want to quickly mention plugins. If you find something is missing in Cordova's APIs, that doesn't mean you have to abandon it. With plugins, Cordova offers a way to interact directly with the native code of each of the operating systems. This does mean that any feature you implement will have to be coded multiple times for each platform. But it is still better than coding everything for each platform. Luckily, given Apache Cordova's open source community support, you may find that someone has already done the hard work for you. Here is an example of an iOS plugin for push notifications. As you can see on their GitHub page, they give you all the information, documentation, and support you need to implement this plugin. There is also a place to report bugs and make feature requests. OK, that's all for this lesson. Check back in for lessons 2 and 3, where we will set up our development environments for iPhone and Android. Ciao!